So he has more than 50 research publications in uh, several international journals reputed, including New Phytologist, Genome Biology and Evolution and others. Uh, so I was asked him about the research project. So he has so many projects. Okay, I will read those. One is uh, he has a project of two crores from ICR National Agricultural Science uh, with ICRISAT and National Institute, uh, uh, another National Institute uh, on Abiotics. And he has two SERP DSP projects. One is PI, the other is co-PI. Uh, so one project they are working on anthrocyanose resistance in soybean. The other one is charcoal. Uh, rot resistance in soybean and he has two csr project in collaboration with iit indore uh, they are working there on protein clustering and clustering of rna data and uh, he has one project on uh, from national supercomputer computing machine as a co-pi with iit indore uh, so here they are working on algorithm development for uh, genome clustering and then um, he also told me they have Okay, where he is co PI, so they are working on genome editing in soybean. So that's a long thing. So I was wondering how you can manage so many research projects okay, at a time. Uh, so, anyway, I will invite him to uh, give her uh, a talk. Thank you very much, Ramakrishna, for a kind introduction and distinguished faculties, students, and staff. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. And this is my first visit uh, to this institute. And also in uh, Punjab also, uh, hardly I have visited. So yesterday I was in Ludhiana Veterinary College. So I had a brief uh, talk there. So I'm very happy to see the campus and very nice place. So I'll briefly discuss about the work, what uh, we are doing there. And uh, we have this group, a uh, lot of students also there doing PhDs. So it will be nice to discuss with you. Uh, so this is uh, ICR Institute and our main aim is to develop the new varieties for soybean uh, so that uh, we can give to the farmers and then farmers uh, uh, growing all this soybean. So most of these uh, soybean is grown in the central India. Madhya Pradesh is the highest state, uh, biggest, uh, largest area for soybean. And therefore, a lot of industries, oil processing industries is there. And uh, so this is a very important crop at the international level. Uh, US, China, Argentina, Brazil, they are going for this crop at a very high level because wide applications in industries, in pharmaceuticals and uh, for food purpose. So I will just, uh, so there's a lot of importance uh, for this crop and uh, I will discuss uh, what we are doing. So as I mentioned, it's a very important oilseed crop. And in India, the current status is that more than 70% of the edible oil we are importing from different countries. And huge amount of foreign exchange we have to do just to import this oil. And the demand for this edible oil is increasing day by day and uh, production needs to be increased. So there's a lot of pressure on oilseed crops uh, to increase their production, to increase the area. A second important point is the word protein. This is a 40% protein in the soybean seed. And this is the highest protein you can get from any plant source. So very important source for protein, uh, for humans, for animal feeds, for industries. So industry use uh, isolate this protein and uh, give for uh, protein concentrates. So that is very important. Uh, oil is less, 20%. If we look at the groundnut, it has 40% uh, oil. Uh, but this uh, soybean 20% uh, is also sufficient and a uh, lot of industries are extracting oils and after extracting the oil the remaining uh, substitute is used as an animal feed and this was very uh, it was exported the uh, animal feed was exported to europe and uh, farmers used to get a lot of uh, money based on that so it's a, uh, this industry is very uh, crucial, but what is happening is that the other countries are also producing a huge amount of soybean and this uh, animal feed price also fluctuates, sometimes price, sometimes less. So market price is also dependent on the production at the worldwide level. Uh, one property what I want to mention is about nitrogen fixation. So this is a legume crop and it has nodules in the roots. 
so it can fix the atmospheric nitrogen and that is a very important like we all know that uh, farmers use lot of urea for application in the uh, and that is very expensive and uh, uh, in the northern region in punjab and haryana the major crops are rice and wheat both are cereals and with the use of application of fertilizer the soil fertility has reduced so it's very important for the farmers to grow a leguminous crop uh, to improve the uh, fertility of the soil so any legume crop uh, groundnut chickpea pigeon pea soybean if they introduce uh, in these northern states that will be very useful for soil fertility and overall uh, agriculture now if we look at the uses so it has wide use and in the us and other countries uh, tofu is very commonly used for edible purpose they also use it uh, and make it soup and it's very widely consumed uh, uh, soybean in india uh, no consumption is not there in our regular diet very little consumption only 8 to 10% soybean is used for food purpose and uh, but there are a lot of benefits human benefits a lot of uh, isoflavonoids in the seeds metabolites and uh, they are very useful for our health and prevent from uh, uh, diseases another animal feed as i mentioned that the indian uh, feed industry is completely dependent on this crop and poultry sector then uh, last year there was a heavy shortage of this uh, soybean and uh, indian government uh, was asked to import the uh, soybean from other countries so uh, industry needs uh, this uh, uh, crop to produce more soybean in other countries biodiesel is there in argentina they are making a lot of uh, biodiesel and a uh, lot of uh, computer uh, sector also you know, ink uh, they need uh, this soybean oil and food industries uh, and pharmaceutical so hundreds of different applications are there and very big importance is being given to uh, this crop in at the international level if you look at the production so in india they were not grown uh, previously it was grown only in the hilly region in northeast and in uttaranchal but later on india adopted this crop and very fast uh, the area was expanded and within a very short two decades time uh, area reached up to 12 million hectares mostly in uh, madhya pradesh maharashtra and rajasthan these are the three states and other area what we are focusing is on southern region telangana and uh, andhra pradesh karnataka uh, there are some challenges there are some uh, because this crop is not adopted there some diseases are there so we want to develop new varieties where these new states in the northern region also uh, we want to spread uh, if you look at the major challenges in agriculture overall the climate change is a very big uh, uh, reason for low production uh, in last 3 4 years what we have seen that uh, sometimes uh, there is a drought stress after the, when the farmers plant the seed then there is a no rainfall for uh, 15 20 days and the plants they again have to uh, give this uh, uh, sowing is done so drought is a very big uh, threat and any time we can observe drought threat either sowing or during harvesting uh, water we cannot give irrigation to the huge amount of area so irrigation giving to this crop is not uh, there and this is a rain fed crop completely depend on the rainfall system another also we see sometimes rainfall also continues for long time so that also damages so water logging in the field is a very big problem uh, during harvesting the farmers have problem because continuous rainfall is there during harvesting and soybean will germinate if it is not harvested on time it will germinate and they will not uh, get the proper uh, product stress diseases insect pests uh, are there and uh, there are challenges to develop varieties which are resistant so at our institute we are dealing with all these issues and trying to develop new varieties and uh, seed composition is another important uh, trait uh, we have to increase the oil content if oil content 20 to 23 percent but we want to increase it then oleic acid is a uh, very important for our health uh, for heart and uh, that and is the oleic acid content in soybean uh, to 50 percent or 80 percent in us they have uh, developed transgenic soybean with 80 percent oleic acid and in future we will get all the oil in us with 80 percent oleic acid content 
so that also is a major um, uh, area which uh, we are focusing on uh, now just briefly i want to give about this uh, genetically modified soybean in uh, it in uh, us and other countries more than 90% soybean is uh, genetically modified uh, for herbicide tolerance and for insect resistance so uh, they have uh, all the soybean and several other crops uh, are genetically modified uh, for different traits in india we are in the non gm soybean and uh, sometimes it's a disadvantage but uh, some market prefer a non uh, gm soybean so we have advantage there and this gm soybean was developed in us in 1996 which was known as round ready soybean and uh, now in near future we'll be getting a lot of uh, gm uh, crops including soybean uh, recently drought tolerant gm soybean was released in uh, brazil and there was a gene from sunflower that was transferred to the soybean crop so uh, in what is expected is in near future is a lot of uh, genetically modified soybean will be available uh, at our institute we have three approaches we are targeting molecular breeding so in molecular breeding what we do is that one uh, two varieties are there uh, we do crossing one variety has a good uh, trait uh, resistant for one disease and this we cross with the uh, varieties which farmers are preferring so it takes several years 7 to 8 years using a molecular breeding approach some markers are available for uh, different traits for drought tolerance uh, these markers are known as like microcyclic markers or single new there are different uh, like varieties uh, at the gene level there are differences at the nucleotide level base pair level so we use those markers in molecular breeding program to develop these varieties uh, second is genetic engineering approach we are doing at the research level to develop drought tolerance uh, soybean lines and third recently genome editing uh, is a very important and uh, this uh, genome editing is a very simple tool to make a modify in the dna at a precise precise level at very small modification will change the crop from resistant to susceptible and in india lot of work going on genome editing at different institutes so this is the uh, technology which will be applied in all the crops and a very important uh, for soybean so as i mentioned that uh, increasing yield Uh, is very important, and then uh, making plants for resistant to biotic stress, abiotic stress. Another important trait is early maturity. Maturity is very important. That uh, farmers prefer a crop which will uh, be ready in 90 days. If it is uh, going beyond 90 days, 95 days, they will not prefer 100 days crop. They will not prefer because uh, they have to plant the next crop, and the moisture is uh, very limited uh, when this is harvest in October. so there is a challenge to develop a early maturity variety which has resistant to drought which is resistant to disease and should be high yielding so that are the challenges and wider adaptability this is also a big uh, issue with the soybean so this plant respond to the light uh, this is a photoperiod plant and it needs particular uh, time of light for flowering and if a plant uh, flowers uh, at one region it will not flower at the another region same time so this is crop is a photoperiod sensitive crop and uh, one variety developed for uh, like punjab region will not grow well in the the southern region so we have to develop varieties state wise varieties need to be developed and uh, seed composition as i mentioned uh, that also we are working on uh, i will discuss briefly about this abiotic stress drought and we have this uh, funded project by icr a big project collaboration with uh, igrisat and national so abiotic stress management baramati near pune so at our institute we have 4000 uh, germplasm lines of soybean and every year last 15 20 years they have been uh, uh, cultivating this 4000 lines uh, uh, adopt uh, trying to uh, uh, record the data for yield and other traits and um, uh, now i am working on this 300 lines so here you can see these rain out shelters are there so what we do is that uh, we stop the uh, water and uh, rainfall and cover these plants and give stress drought stress for 15 to 20 days and after that uh, we identify one or two lines which are still giving after stress still giving yield a good yield and leaves are green pots are green 
So these plants we identify by extensive screening. And there are other parameters in the lab, uh, photosynthesis rate, chlorophyll content, water content in the leaf, they all be measured uh, for this drought stress. And finally, uh, we sequence these lines. We do all uh, whole genome sequencing, complete genome, uh, RNA gene expression studies, and uh, phenomic studies also we are doing in collaboration with other institutes. So automated phenotyping of these 300 lines have been completed. Uh, sequencing is also completed and uh, now we are looking for key genes which will uh, give resistance for drought stress so that we are working on and we have identified several genes and if we transfer them to the susceptible variety uh, that will make those varieties drought tolerant so this is a very big project and a complex project this trait is not governed by single genes but large number of genes take part in this drought tolerance and other traits so we have to identify all these genes, then transfer into the varieties which farmers are growing. Uh, so we are working on these genetically modified drought tolerance lines. Uh, this is one uh, technology what uh, we are doing in collaboration that is virus induced gene silencing. And here what we do that we suppress the expression of one gene and then see what is the effect. So here you can see one gene uh, called is ethylene insensitivity to gene which is known for drought tolerance was silence this rna was blocked and what we found surprisingly is that after giving the drought stress it is still uh, green and uh, can produce a good quality of soybean so here uh, we have demonstrated using this virus into gene silencing that uh, uh, gene can be silenced and a drought tolerant line can be developed so this is a very special virus uh, vector is there which was patented in us and one of my collaborators at uh, National so Abiotic Stress Management, uh, he worked in US for a long time. He got this technology and he has demonstrated in India using this approach that we can silence the gene and uh, see the function, what is the function of that gene. Uh, another is using the same approach. It was to overexpress uh, certain genes. So this is another gene called known as FAT3A gene, responsible for oleic acid content and uh, a lot of work going on this fat uh, genes the three genes are there and uh, combination of these three genes can increase the oleic acid content in soybean so one of my collaborators in us has already developed lines using uh, much uh, using these fat three genes uh, so what we found here that over expression of this rna will increase the drought stress in soybean and uh, stress for salinity so this is another gene which is very important uh, has been identified and the men's group based on this is uh, we have communicated so we are expecting that this will play important role for drought tolerance uh, this is a rni approach which is called as rna interference so the previous approach which i have uh, enhanced expression i only block expression but not developing the transgenic plants they were just give the uh, block and uh, inform what is the function, what we can see. Uh, but this technology, RNAi, we are developing the transgenic plants uh, for after the silencing of a gene. So this is a gene FNSN, and uh, this gene also we have uh, silenced and uh, construct we have prepared, and RNA plants we are going to uh, develop now for four or five different genes. So this is very laborious, like you cannot transfer a gene in soybean very easily because it needs a lot of uh, technical uh, knowledge advance. And in legumes, it is not possible to develop transgenic very easily. So our groups have standardized this uh, agrobacterium based transformation for soybean. And uh, all four or five genes, we are in the process to transfer and make the transgenic soybean lines. Uh, this is another trait. This I'm also working on. Uh, this is water logging, and we are screening the, in the field. This is a field you can see that uh, we block uh, water for 15, uh, 10 to 15 days. These plants are underwater, and continuously we have to maintain the level. And uh, then after uh, a certain period, then we see that which plant is still able to tolerate this stress, water stress, and uh, can give the higher yield. So here also we do a lot of uh, parameters, uh, studies about the, their length uh, before giving the stress, length or height of the plant after the stress, and what is the weight of the seed after uh, uh, harvesting. 
So these 300 lines, uh, again, we have done for both drought and water logging and uh, new varieties, a lot of breeders, plant breeders are working. And after identification of these uh, lines, they are crossing with the uh, other varieties and will make the plant uh, resistant for water logging stress. Uh, seed composition already, as I mentioned, that oleic acid content is very important for human health. And uh, if we can increase the oleic acid, it will be useful. And uh, like we use olive oil because it has a high oleic acid content. So similarly, we want to make soybean oil also similar to the olive oil. Uh, soybean also has some entry nutrition factors. And therefore, we cannot uh, eat soybean directly. This is the uh, seed which we need specific, uh, like we have to boil soybean for 15 minutes before we can consume it. So there is a, this trypsin inhibitor and this inhibitor will get inactivated after the boiling. So after this is a very uh, uh, like important for consuming soybean and uh, our institute working to make the varieties which are free from this anti nutrient factor. So this is called as KTI and new varieties being have been developed which does not uh, have this kti and which can be consumed uh, without boiling so in uh, like a soybean if we can add soybean in wheat flour a small percent 10 percent so that is very important and uh, uh, that is good for our health so a small 10 percent of a soya, uh, soya flour can be added to wheat flour and can be consumed so these lines will be very useful Another is that uh, it has a bini flavor. So this bini flavor also we want to remove. And in Indian population, if the flavor is not good, we will not uh, use that. Uh, because we can also prepare a dal from this um, uh, soya bean. But again, the bini flavor is uh, very important. So if we can uh, remove this, there is a gene, which is called as lipoxygenase gene. And we want to uh, remove this gene from the varieties. Uh, in addition, large number of other traits like linoleic acid is there, and phytate, and some sugars like raffinose, stachyose. So if we can change the composition of the seed, uh, they, uh, that will be very be helpful to the industry and for human consumption. Uh, so this uh, genome editing uh, is very important and uh, a lot of countries have already uh, developed one variety for after genome editing has been released in US uh, with high oleic acid content. This is the first variety uh, after genome editing has been released. Uh, a small change in the DNA or mutations will make a big difference. And uh, this technology like CRISPR-Cas, uh, Cas9 technology, we are working in collaboration with a group at National Agriculture Research Institute, Mohali. And uh, yesterday I visited and met the scientists. They have already developed uh, uh, other crops like tomato and uh, rice with uh, using this genome editing technology and on soybean they are working to develop or remove some of the genes uh, which are like a knocking out of the LOX2 gene, KTI gene and BADH2 gene. Those three genes they are targeting. This is a DBT funded project and uh, the two scientists have good experience in genome editing. They also worked in uh, Canada for a long time and last two, three years they are working in this uh, Mohali Institute and uh, several crops they are working and with uh, very good uh, young scientists have, uh, so we are collaborating with them and uh, we are looking forward for soybean crop with this genome editing uh, i have been working on diseases for a long time in different crops and this is a big challenge what uh, we have seen in soybean or several crops like uh, new diseases are coming due to climate change uh, so diseases, diseases which were not present in certain regions like in central India, uh, new diseases are appearing and uh, we have to identify, a farmer will not be able to identify what is this disease and uh, then there is total damage, uh, they will not be able to harvest anything if a disease come and if they cannot control it. In North India, this YMV, that is yellow mosaic virus is very prevalent, every year this uh, YMV disease will come. And there is a small insect, a white fly, which uh, transmit this disease from one plant to another. So this is very common and for Punjab and Haryana and uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, resistant line to yellow mosaic virus uh, is very important. And our institute has developed new lines, identified this gene using whole genome sequencing, uh, molecular markers have been identified. 
and uh, uh, new varieties have been developed. Another is this anthracnose. Last year, we have seen in central India a very heavy uh, anthracnose in soybean plant, and uh, damage was there, yield was very less. So, I have got a new project on this anthracnose from uh, DST Serb, which we just started. And uh, we will be identifying this uh, anthracnose resistant gene from uh, soybean. Similar charcoal rot is a very dangerous uh, for this plant, soybean plants. And uh, if it is infected, uh, the complete plant will dry and uh, it will, there will be no seed available. So these two diseases we are focusing uh, with the funded project. Uh, rust is another disease and in southern region, in uh, southern Maharashtra, in Sangli state and Karnataka, this uh, river is their river system. And there is a very favorable climate for rust disease. So every year that uh, disease occurs in the southern region, and uh, we have identified some lines uh, from that, and we are working on those. So this is resistant the priority for uh, soybean. Uh, I'll give briefly about this rust, and uh, as I mentioned, it was observed in the southern region. And there is was only one uh, line, so I've been line called as EC241780, which shows a stand. But all so I've been varieties, all were highly susceptible. So we took this uh, so I've been line, and uh, two three years back uh, we did whole genome sequencing. Now uh, so I've been is a crop where a lot of genomic resources are available. A uh, whole genome was uh, sequenced in US in 2010. And till now, on 1,000 new varieties or lines have been sequenced. So huge amount of uh, genomic data is available, sequence data, RNA data, then uh, protein data available. So what we do is we identify new line, then sequence, and then compare with the available sequences from US and other countries. And then pinpoint what is the gene, where it is located, on what chromosome, and how we can use it to develop the varieties. Now this is uh, just to show the how that uh, SNP sequence data is available, which is in the ATGC form. And uh, this line which we sequenced, we tried to compare with 20,000, uh, 22,000 lines from US uh, department, USDA. They already has this data uh, in ATGC form. So what we have to do is to compare our um, data. And uh, surprisingly, what uh, I found is that where there is one region which is matching a small region and uh, that line was resistant in us also that they have uh, reported that this is rest resistant line and our line also has the same genes in same uh, long one megabase per region uh, is matched completely so using this uh, comparative genomics approach we were uh, pinpoint the region uh, on chromosome 18 that this has the resistant genes and this we are transferring to the uh, susceptible varieties so as I was mentioning, uh, Dr. Ramakrishna, that we are collaborating with the IITs because the data is coming in a huge quantity and uh, we don't have that expertise to analyze that data. So IIT Computation Sciences Group uh, has collaborated and two, three projects uh, are already running. Uh, recently, National Supercomputing Mission is there and they have supercomputing IIT Kharagpur, CDEC and uh, four, several places. But the difficulty is that uh, they are underutilized and uh, utility is not there, all the supercomputing facilities there. So this group in IIT has access, direct access, and uh, I am providing them huge data of this uh, RNA data, DNA data, protein data. And they have already developed several algorithms, uh, which is working on the analysis of the big data. So new approaches have been developed and uh, big data not only for this any big data can be uh, analyzed new algorithms can be developed and uh, large scale analysis can be done whether it is a phenotypic data or for, from any source so those algorithms uh, have been developed and uh, we are also planning at the national level uh, uh, several iits are coming together to work in the field of agriculture and uh, uh, not only at the molecular data but in the farmers field uh, application of drones is there to record uh, what is the condition of the crop. So that also need uh, new softwares are needed for application of drones. And a precision agriculture is there where a farmer will able to monitor their crops in the directly using that mobile and they will know whether irrigation is needed, what time and what time we have to spray. 
So a uh, lot of opportunities are for interdisciplinary research from different scientists and we are going through that. Uh, this is uh, that genes which we have identified, that green color, three genes are there. And these three genes uh, we have been pointed for rust disease. Uh, we still don't know out of these three genes which is the one, they are very similar to each other. So we compared their sequence, uh, group them together, they all are same. And even uh, using virus induced gene silencing, if we block one gene, the other gene also gives the expression. So, uh, and from these genes, we have identified these insertions and deletions, small five, seven base pair deletions are there or insertions. And these are very helpful for us in this breeding program. So we designed some uh, tools, primers, flanking to these uh, insertion deletions and used to develop new varieties. Uh, another area which I've been working uh, is comparative genomics. Uh, so soybean, this crop uh, is very interesting, like uh, this is called as an uh, ancient polyploid. Uh, this, uh, there were two whole genome duplication, I'll just give uh, information for students. Like if there are 10 chromosomes in one plant, uh, there was a time that they got duplicated, so it became 20 chromosomes. And there was another second duplication, so these 20 chromosomes duplicated became 40 chromosomes. So this happened in soybean, one occurred around 50 million years ago and another occurred around 10 million years ago. So we can exactly pinpoint that what time chromosome duplication occurred. And not only in the soybean, all these, a uh, lot of uh, wheat, wheat if you know, it's a uh, duplication, lots of duplication, chromosome wise duplication occurred. And we have to identify what time chromosome duplicated, which genes duplicated, which sometimes genes lost. So that information is very useful. Now here I have uh, compared this with the common bean. Common bean is the phasulus and uh, we prepare in a rajma. This is, uh, we prepare rajma from this common bean. So this, these two crops were the same, uh, originated from single plant and then they diverge. And when we compare the genes, the, all the same genes present in uh, these common beans, so have been same order. There is some variation. Uh, similarly, pigeon pea, we prepare turdal from pigeon pea. So this pigeon pea, soya, common bean, they all have similar DNA, similar genes and uh, pigeon pea and common bean are genome is small. They have not undergone these duplications and therefore for soya bean, we compare this uh, soya bean with pigeon pea and common bean. Uh, these are warm season legumes and other legumes are uh, like chickpea, chana and um, also like uh, lentil. And uh, these are well, uh, winter crops, so they are cool season legumes. So now plant in the, uh, previously not much information available, but now whole genome sequence available for all these legume crops and a lot of information to apply this comparative genomics, functional genomics, and new tools are coming. So this sequencing cost is going down and we can sequence a huge amount of germplasm lines uh, to identify uh, these genes. Uh, this is just a figure showing the sequence analysis of these three genes and uh, what we see is that uh, they all are very similar uh, at the protein level, three uh, same protein at the DNA level, minor variations, but these three code for rust resistance. And uh, uh, these are comparing different legumes. Uh, there are wild, uh, there are species like Medicago and Lotus. So they, those uh, which have very small genome, we uh, compare because the genes are same, their functions are also same. So we go for the model uh, crops, uh, non-legume, Arabidopsis probably you might have heard is a model plant and uh, that has been sequenced and uh, that information from Arabidopsis is also used in uh, our legume system to identify these genes. So right now it's a very good opportunity to work in this area because it has become interdisciplinary and uh, computer scientists and all the other uh, uh, scientists they are working. So with our group in IIT, a lot of VTech students are doing programming and uh, they analyze all these genes. So they are working on that uh, uh, at a protein level also at uh, RNA level and uh, for large scale data analysis. So in summary, just uh, um, uh, I would like to say that uh, genomics is a, is a wide application in soya bean and for uh, different plants and a uh, lot of new technologies coming in this area 
and mostly is uh, the key target is to identify genes and then develop the new varieties so overall approach is uh, we have to identify uh, the area where we can develop the plants which are drought tolerant and uh, disease resistant or improve the seed composition trait so and another this genome editing uh, is come upcoming and in all the areas whether it's uh, human uh, genetics or animal genetics uh, genome editing is playing a very important role in plants uh, like as i mentioned transgenic uh, uh, gm crops are have some disadvantage as compared like uh, gene is transferred but in genome editing no gene is transferred like in india we have a bt cotton is there uh, but uh, we don't have any other gm crop so gm crop uh, preference to gm crop is less but uh, with genome editing uh, that will be possible to modify these several crops and we will be seeing a lot of new uh, crops with the genome editing technology so with this i would like to thank you thank you very much and uh, i'll be happy to take any questions thank you yes Firstly, I'm not from this field, so my question might be uh, very simple. That's fine, that's fine. So, you mentioned that you science three different genes uh, and saw that they were playing a role in crop stress, right? Yes, yes. So, did you do any sort of comparative analysis between these three? Like, which one offers the best? Uh, yes, that we are doing, we are measuring the different parameters and uh, see but right now we are just uh, uh, we saw the difference at the leaf uh, stage that uh, if we stop the water for all these three plants uh, they are uh, still able to uh, leaf is uh, there but we have to grow them uh, at a full plant then see the difference at the uh, so i mean yield like how much uh, is the seed weight and the yield so difference is there for all of these three will be there yeah, that we have to still figure out. Yes. Virus. Right. So for comparative analysis, I think you would need to have the same system, correct? Right, right. So see, this virus into gene silencing very fast. Within uh, one, two, three months, couple of months, we can identify the function of a gene. And uh, the, so first we do uh, screening using uh, virus and gene silencing. Suppose 10 genes are there, so at the same time we screen 10 genes. But then when we have to develop a, a genetically modified that is using RNAi, so that is a very long term, two, three years it takes. So then we select only the best one or two genes and go for that RNAi technology. So my another question is related to that. Since you figured out that the three genes are playing the role in the process, uh, do you also intend to silence all of them at the same time using CRISPR-Cas? Of course, that is, uh, if it is possible, if we, if we can silence that all three, so we have to see what effect uh, the, is there. But that's a good point that several genes, multiple times we have to silence. Uh, for example, for oleic acid, uh, two, three genes if you can silence and uh, get high oleic acid. So that is there. And with uh, CRISPR-Cas, we can do that silence multiple genes. Yes, so my follow-up question was actually Answer that you have already tried that because with CRISPR-Cas, the thing is that if you can obviously silence, but the thing is that we still are not aware of what kind of drawbacks or limitations that system is going to offer. Like, what are going to be the off target effects of that? And then this scenario, you can actually, I work in the area of cancer research and non coding RNA. Okay. So, there obviously it is going to be different to actually visualize it, but in plants, yeah. that was going to be my question. Yes. What are the drawbacks or limitations? Yes. yes. So, can you, can you think of the drawbacks? Yes, uh, yes, definitely. That's an important point, Virtue, because if we silence some of the gene, so that trait will be improved. But on the other side, we see that the, the plant has become susceptible to certain diseases. So that is there that one gene is not uh, only playing a role in only one trait. It plays a role in multiple areas. And that is a very important. We have to see that uh, if we silence one gene or make modification, it will not affect at the other uh, stages. It will not become susceptible for drought, stress, or anything. Because we can improve one thing, but it should not deteriorate the quality of seed germination. Is there if one uh, gene is silenced, uh, the seed will not germinate? That is also we have seen. 
so this is very important and uh, finally when we develop the varieties uh, we have to look at the overall uh, part that it should be good uh, like after silencing also it should able to give good productivity and it should not be susceptible like that yeah it's very good thank you okay other questions okay. Uh, sir, Yes. Uh, so in a way or is there any other format? And uh, related to that only, why is there is need of supercomputers? Like in speed, the data and use it with the glass and all. Right. So what is the need of supercomputers in your computer? Right, definitely. Uh, no, that this is a very important point that data is available in very different format. Uh, some softwares can take the data directly in the same format they may analyze. But there are different, different softwares. And uh, if you want to analyze data or integrate different data, you will have to uh, make a format in different formats also. So even the like SNP data, the nucleotide level is there. We change it into the like uh, binary format, 0, 1, 0, 1 format, uh, we have to make that. So it depends on what type of analysis we are doing. So we have to uh, change the format of the data. And uh, as you uh, asked for why we need supercomputers, because uh, uh, the uh, tools what we have today, they have limitations. Uh, they cannot take huge data, Is they cannot uh, available analyze. For example, some tools we use just for aligning or these things we do small uh, software we use. So they will take maybe 100 uh, points, 1000 points, 10,000. But the type of data what we are getting uh, using uh, right now, we can isolate data from internet through Google or from a lot of uh, data available. So these computers, uh, supercomputers have high speed, high precision, and uh, those are very uh, essential because the data analysis time uh, will increase. So if it takes uh, right now, if it takes 10 days to analyze the same data, with supercomputer within 10-15 uh, minutes you can analyze. So time is important and precision that uh, it should accurately uh, uh, give the output. So these two things are very important. Therefore, supercomputers are now being used. But the challenge is how uh, effectively we can use that available supercomputers are available, but we don't know uh, how we can uh, use them properly. So that we need to understand. Uh, but since you are not from plant background, uh, we, from genomic, uh, after genomic dating, we can, uh, means we can make the plant less tolerant or uh, less resistant to the disease. Yes. But if your plant is infected, means what are the present mechanisms? Like, how, what's the medications to the plant if it is infected? Or yes, something? yes. Yeah, there are various uh, sprays available, like fungicide is there. So, farmer use very routinely fungicide or insecticides are there. Uh, and the key challenge for farmers is that diseases are of different types. So they don't know exactly which fungicide to apply at what time. And uh, there is a lot of information is not there. So uh, mechanisms are there to protect, even if after the infection or if insect comes. And uh, if because we can just give the seeds and they will grow at different places. For example, like this BT cotton is there. And this BT cotton will only protect for one lepidopterian larva it will not protect from other uh, insects. So farmers still have to use uh, other, uh, if they think that uh, it will protect from all the insects, so it, that is not there. It is only targeted for one insect and one species. So they have to still have to use. And if a plant is infected, is, it, is there any way possible to reverse the effect? Yeah, yeah, early identification of disease or insect, then if you spray, that is possible. But at the later stage, if the disease has developed or insect has made uh, damages, sometimes insect will enter into the plant and inside the stem. And even if you spray, it will uh, not have effect. So early identification is very important. And here, uh, as I mentioned, like uh, we are working on computational tools uh, where using these mobile apps, we can identify the progress of the disease and farmers will directly uh, which disease is there and uh, what time uh, uh, they can apply. So these type of tools are needed, but for that we have to uh, give them a lot of photography images uh, to identify the disease, how that is spreading. So that also we are planning uh, to do with the farmers.
Yes. So we can have two varieties, but how do we put face this challenge or came across the problem of drought as well as the water logging problem? Yes. That is a certainly uh, creating problem for the farmer. Yes, yes. We yeah. can use one at a time, but how do we work it? Two, both of them. Yes, this is a very important uh, like topic, and since we are also working in the same uh, area, that at the same time uh, crop has a, will face a drought, and the same crop will face uh, water logging at different stages. So these comes under the abiotic stress, and there are certain genes which have common role. So this when the plant is under stress, the certain genes are activated. And these genes may play a role in both uh, whether it is a drought stress or uh, water logging stress. So that is a very important point, and uh, we are looking uh, uh, now. We have data sequence data is there, but we have to identify common gene which will protect from both. So that is if we can able to identify. But they all come under the same stress category, and uh, plant has the same mechanism. To avoid the stress for avoid disease, the same uh, pathways are there. A lot of proteins they play jointly in this role, so it will be possible to develop for both. The next question I, I, I have regarding since the soybean is also come to offer pollination variety, so there might be a chances of plant breaching of genetic data from one plant to other species, or any local variety could could affect negatively or positively. Yeah, yeah, no. So, Abin is uh, self-pollinated, so there is no cross-pollination is not there, and that is a very big uh, uh, issue uh, for um, uh, genetically modified that a gene will get transferred to wild species and it will spread. So, all the scientists, what the uh, mechanism they have developed, they go very carefully that what uh, whether this gene will go to other plant or not, and after extreme precautions, uh, each case is studied, and then only that crop is released. Like soybean plant uh, was not originated in India, and uh, it was originated in China. So they have hundreds of wild species there. But in India, we don't have any wild species or that. So they look at what was the origin of the plant and uh, whether how much um, uh, it can spread. So soybean and these legumes are all self-pollinated. So this gene uh, transfer to other crops or other wild species very less, very minimal. But cross-pollinated crops, uh, it is a bigger issue. Of the end products in soybean, yeah. uh, whether like in the direction of uh, oil, yes. Yes. Of, as a protein source, yes. you do it different uh, pathways accordingly because there can be some common you know, metabolites yeah. where you can channelize metabolic pathways, push them. Uh, right. So according to the end, you use also the genes and pathways are much better. Yeah. Am I right? I mean, I'm not from the future. Now that uh, I will just give an example about protein and oil. Uh, what we have found when we go uh, to increase the oil content, the protein content is reduced. So there is some uh, same similar mechanism is there. So we are not able to increase both like protein at the same time at uh, oil also same time. It's not possible. Uh, one is decreasing. So there uh, we have to study what are the pathways which are uh, playing important role in uh, for proteins. Right, right, definitely. Yeah. So I've been working on identifying this uh, protein encoding gene. So large number of, uh, there are more than 50, 60 uh, seed source protein genes, uh, vicillin, corn, vicillin, and in the soybean. So large number of genes are there. And for oil also, hundreds of genes are there. It's not a single gene which is making this oil. Uh, hundreds of genes are there. So it's a very complex and uh, that uh, it will be interesting to study if the pathways. Okay, any other question? One more question. Okay, so, uh, Sanjay, uh, you have 
Thank you very much, and it was very nice. Thanks. Sir. So first of all, thank you so much, sir, for being here with us and sparing your valuable time. And it was really interesting. And as you can see, there are a lot of questions asked. And uh, you know, the students will get really interested because many of them are master students. So I think it was a great opportunity for a lot of them to learn about the kind of science that you are doing. And many of them are actually aspiring researchers. So they are all appearing for the competitive exam. So now they will know that there is another scientist uh, whom they can approach uh, for their research. And yeah, so uh, so once again, thank you so much for uh, enlightening us with your work. And it's amazing the kind of different areas that you're targeting. Also, you mentioned about artificial intelligence that you intend to use in future. And uh, also uh, the computational work that you have taken up. I think it's really interesting. And it actually is inspiring for the young uh, uh, scientists like us who have just joined this university that how we can also you know, uh, manage different uh, aspects of similar kind of research because your main crop that you're working on is so heavy. So once again, thank you so much. And also you know, thank you to uh, Professor Vasurika for organizing this lecture for all of us. And thank you everyone uh, for being here and uh, sparing your time. Thank you.